Hello Internet, welcome back to our Cataclysm Dark Days Ahead tutorial series. Uh, and in this episode we're going to be talking about forges and the charcoal kiln and the relationship between them and why they are valuable things to have. So I usually shoot to have a forge within the first week or two. It depends uh, a lot on your situation. Like sometimes I don't build a forge at all. Um, sometimes I just wait until we can build a vehicle forge. But a lot of times if you can get to forge in the early game, it's pretty beneficial. Again, this requires a high fabrication. Uh, it's fab three to make the charcoal kiln and it is fab five to make the, the actual forge. Um, and then there's a lot of work required as well to make tools for forging. Um, but that, that's usually fine. It just depends on, on whether or not you can easily get those things or whether they're a little bit of a hassle. Now, in order to build either of these items, we need a lot of rocks. So the charcoal forge, um, sorry, the rock forge requires 40 rocks. Alternatively, there's another forge in the game. Isn't there an electric forge you can build as a standalone? We don't have skills for it at the moment. So for us, we would be looking for the, uh, the rock forge, which requires 40 rocks. Now, that might not sound like a lot, but it is kind of annoying, or it used to be extremely annoying, um, but it's a lot easier these days, and we'll talk about that in a moment. And then the, the kiln as well. Basically, the forge requires charcoal uh, to run, which makes sense. It's a, it's a forge. Um, you know, I, I don't think we've ever talked about putting gas forges in the game. So it's pretty much just those charcoal forges at the moment and electric forges. And then we have a kiln for making charcoal. And you'll see this also requires 40 rocks. It does require digging, which uh, in the early game can be difficult because this is the wrong menu. Uh, because if we go Q dig, the digging stick is the one that most people make uh, early game, but the problem is it only has a one digging quality. However, you can make entrenching tools or shovels. Depending on your mods, you may also have a stone shovel available to you. Uh, we obviously don't. It would show up in this menu. Um, but these have proper... Uh, oh, does the shovel not have a digging quality? Oh, it does. Three digging. I'm just blind. The hoe has one digging and the uh, entrenching tool also has three digging. Now those two things require a proper forge setup, which we don't have. So unless we find a shovel in the world, we're not going to be able to to make this. Now if we look, did we ever find an entrenching tool? They're pretty common. Shovels, we have not found anything with digging, so that will be a, a hurdle. Really, we don't have anything with digging. We can make a metal charcoal kiln. Uh, it requires tanks and weird that it doesn't require welding in any capacity. We can pull tanks off of vehicles and we could do that instead. Alternatively, you can make a clay kiln, but this is not, this doesn't create charcoal. Um, so yeah, pipes and metal tanks, I guess, are the way we're gonna go. Still gonna need rocks for the forge though. So let's talk about that. This also, this also requires digging. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, pretty, pretty irritating. Uh, you don't need to dig to make a kiln. You can literally, literally just dump a kiln on some bricks, like we could just build the kiln on the sidewalk. So a little, little annoyed at that. So it looks like a kiln is not going to be, uh, or I'm sorry, a forge. You can literally build a forge on just rocks. You can just put rocks in your yard and build a kiln or a forge so i'm a little irritated by the fact that we need digging to do so um, especially a high tier digging tool doesn't really make sense to me and it's one of those things in cataclysm that's frustratingly cyclical uh, we need to make a forge in order to build a shovel but we need a shovel to build a forge and i really hate stuff like that so unfortunately we're not going to be able to build this forge at the moment However, we can still prepare for that eventuality. So what we would do uh, as the home wrecker in the vanilla game, it is basically what we're going to do. We're going to go out and find these boulders and we're going to smash them because when you smash them, they give a lot of rocks. Now we could come out here and just forage and look around in the forest for rocks. Um, if you find areas like this that are big open areas uh, with nothing in them, a lot of times there are just rocks laying around in the fields you can pick up. That's how it used to be. You would have to find your rocks, but that's so frustratingly tedious because there's like one or two in every field. 
since the addition of these, since the forest tile, basically forests got reworked a while ago, they now generate these boulders in them. The easiest way to get rocks is to smash the boulders. And the easiest way to smash things is to have, again, it's based on your strength plus the bash of your current weapon versus the bash resistance of this item. So if you have a high bashing weapon and high strength, you can bash a lot of stuff. Some things aren't really bashable. Walls have like 180 strength checks sometimes. So you're never going to get that, that high of a, of a bash. But boulders we can handle. And the best tool for that in the vanilla game at the moment at low tier technology is the home wrecker. Later on, you would use a sledgehammer or whatever. Um, but for something you can build from scratch, the home wrecker is the way to go. See, all it requires is some metal, some string, and a plank. So we're gonna make a home wrecker really quick. Wield the home. We are wielding the home wrecker, and then you just go out and you smash the brick, the the rocks. And you'll see it gave us five rocks. Uh, this one gave one rock. That's a little unfortunate. So there are three boulders in the game. There are small boulders, which these are small boulders. Uh, this is what it looks like in this tile set. Uh, then there are medium boulders and large boulders. Uh, medium boulders you can sometimes smash. It will depend on your strength. But large boulders uh, with the home wrecker, unless you have superhuman strength, you're never going to be able to smash them. So, uh, yeah, depending on where you are, this is the easiest way to get rocks. Uh, when I did my prison let's play on the prison island, there were very the boulders there are very large and it was very hard to find a rock. Um, but it will depend where you are. See, this is a, a giant boulder large boulder and if we smash this you'll see we get the message you don't seem to be damaging the large boulder what this means is that your strength combined combined with your current weapon bash is never ever going to be able to beat this so no matter how many times we smash this we're not going to be able to smash it if you don't get that metal that message uh that means that it might be very rare but you are possible in smashing that item so it might take you 50 smashes but as long as you don't get that message you will eventually be able to do it it's just a question of how many times do you have to smash here's a medium boulder we should be able to smash this as well but you'll see it's harder than the small boulder because it has a higher strength requirement which means until we get a good roll we're not going to be able to smash this so we'll just smash until we get it you got 11 rocks from that one and this is a game, again, of waiting on our stamina and keeping an eye on our stamina so we don't overexert ourselves. So at this point, we have enough rocks. We have 46 rocks. So we could, right this second, build the uh, forge if we had digging and if we had the proper fab. Now, we don't, unfortunately. Uh, so we're not going to be able to do that. But we will come over here and just drop our rocks for later. Uh, let's put our clothes back on because we're going to be heading out. We don't need the noise canceling headgear. So we'll drop that on our tools pile. And we will extinguish this fire since we're going to head out. Oh no, we should make a spear first. Um, so there are a couple upgrade paths to Cataclysm. Uh, the Forge is a very good way of upgrading your character to the next level. It allows you to make metal armors. Um, higher tier weapons require forges. Those are very important things to have by the end of the game. Some things, some paths don't require that, like instead of... So like right now we're using the forked spear, which is broken, and we need to make a new one. What we could do is jump to the next tier of spear. So basically, knife spear would be an improvement because it's not... Fl oh, this one is flimsy. We're looking for this knife spear, but we don't have drilling. If we had drilling, we could upgrade to the knife spear. Now, it does less damage than the fork spear, uh, but it's not flimsy, so it would inevitably last much longer. The next tier upgrade would be the pipe spear, but this requires a welder, which we don't currently have. You'll see it's an increase to damage uh, as well as the fact that it's not flimsy. This is a very good go-to if you get your hands on a welder in the early game or if you find a acetylene torch somewhere. The other path to take was instead of getting the welder, we would get the forge and upgrade our fab, and that would unlock the steel spear, I believe it's called, which is even better than the pipe spear um, and is the best spear in the game. There are better spear type weapons, so reach weapons. There are halberds and uh, all pikes and uh, the naginata and things like that that are better and still make reach attacks, but most people who do the spear line, new players, they settle on the steel spear, and that's usually what they stick to for the rest of the game. I personally don't use spears anymore. I use um, mostly blunt weapons. So at this stage of the game, I would have the quarterstaff. 
So we look for the quarter staff. I'd be using the quarter staff, and I would be looking to get the forge so that we could make the iron shod quarter staff. And then once I had all the materials and built all my forging stuff, I would upgrade to the war hammer, which we don't have the recipe for. Um, because I really like the Warhammer. So I don't really use spears, so it's a little bit out of my comfort zone to talk about that. But I think the steel spear is like the de facto spear weapon unless you go halberds or something like that. Don't drop our bandages. Let's go ahead and start a fire again. Shouldn't have extinguished it. And let's make ourselves another spear. We probably don't have the materials for it. We need spikes, yes. Uh, which we probably also don't have the materials for. Yeah, we need chunks of steel. Let's um, let's talk about harvesting metal. Since we're talking about forges, it's important. Once you set up a forge, you will need to make a lot of forge tools. This includes a crucible, uh, which now requires clay. Used to be you could make them out of metal. You can't anymore. You're going to need tongs, which require metal. You're going to need a uh, swage and die set, which we don't even have the recipe for, which is weird. Uh, maybe probably is unlocked as we level our fab. We're going to need an anvil of some sort or a heavy frame to use in lieu of an anvil. We're going to need, really that's it, I guess. I can't think of any other forge tools. But anyway, it's a process. You have to build all these tools in order to forge higher tier weapons and armor. Plus, those higher tier weapons and armor also require metal. So where do you go when you really need metal? Well, on the plus side, we found a hacksaw, which is the de facto tool for harvesting metal. So what we're going to do, we're going to go up here, we're going to find ourselves a vehicle. Uh, not the bike, we don't want to take apart the bike. It's going to be light frames, it's not going to give us as much stuff. Here we have a wreck, I've never done this with a wreck. So when you look at a wreck, you'll see it's a little bit different. Uh, it's built the same way as other vehicles, it's just completely messed up. So even if we look at it, you'll see it's just a smattering of parts. It looks like multiple vehicles that have been forced together. So there are parts here, but they're almost always completely damaged, so you can't get a lot. So like, let's say we pull off the roof, it's going to give us, oh, it's dark. Can't do vehicle work in the dark. Yeah, and uh, we could bring a light out here, so this really put a, a kibosh on my plans. We could bring a light out here and work on it. The problem is if we bring, say, a flashlight, yes, it will illuminate the area and we will be able to harvest. But all the enemies in the area are going to see us uh, and they're going to beeline right for us because they don't have any other visual stimulation uh, or anything. So they're basically going to beeline right to that light. So what we'll do instead is head back to base and read until the sun comes up. Sorry. Sorry, I know. It's, uh, it's frustrating sometimes to not be able to do what I plan to do. But that was the point of the Let's Play. I didn't want to do... Because I could just debug stuff, right? And just show you different things in the game and give you lessons about them. I don't find that fun. I would not enjoy watching that. That's a lot of Vormithrax's content and nothing against that. It's definitely good for people who are searching on YouTube. But I really do prefer Let's Plays. I enjoy playing the game and talking about the game as we come across things. And I think it's entertaining even for people who already know all this stuff might be at least they're watching gameplay it's not like they're watching a, a dry video where i'm just telling you things so i think i think it's more entertaining so what do we want to level we leveled our mechanics to three we need to continue raising our fabrication at this point let's put a few points into electronics so we'll just read no stop let's go to the light and read i really wish we wouldn't choke on the smoke but what are you going to do and we're just going to read until the sun comes up and we'll go out and harvest metal Oh, Lyle Darden is hidden in a darkness, but he is still learning from our, our reading out loud. I really am wondering if reading out loud slows down the process. So there, the sun has come up, so we'll stop. And uh, it does save progress on books, so when we come back, we'll be at 17%. It's not like it changes. Um, and if we level up, let's say we craft a bunch of electronic stuff, we will get like 43%. That's where we'll resume when we go to book reading. It won't start back over at 17%. It will start wherever your, your current skill is. Okay. So I've never done this with a wreck before. Let's see what we get. I'm guessing it's just going to be scrap metal. So let's just grab a random part and pull the roof off. Ignore. If they come over here, we'll fight them. Oh, you know what? We don't have a good weapon. You were attacked by the zapper zombie. Yeah. That seems like something you should have told me about before it happened. Let's back up. Grab the nail bat. Um, we're going to use the nail bat. The zapper zombie, I don't know if we ever talk about this. They're an electric type zombie. If you hit them with a metal weapon, they will shock you. 
The only uh, thing you can do about that is to use a non-metal weapon or wear insulated gloves that will insulate you from that that damage. So the the nail bat should be all metal or all wood rather. Sorry, even though it has nails in it, it's a wood handled weapon. Uh, and it's not a reach weapon, so we're actually going to get into melee combat. On the plus side, the Zapper Zombies are actually pretty pitiful. Uh, so we should kill him no problem. Ignore. Anything else in the area? Because I really just want to do this and see what happens. Let's pull off. Uh, this roof is not as damaged, so we might be able to get something out of it. Uh, and then we'll grab one that is damaged. Completely damaged. And we'll pull that off just to see what we get. Ignore. You'll see this is all passing time, of course. Please warn me before they come over here. I'm getting a little frustrated by that. I don't understand why they're coming all the way over and attacking me when I should be getting a message saying, hey, this thing's about to hit you in the face. You know, you would think, um, you know, it used to be that if I hit ignore, it wouldn't ignore everything. Okay, so we did get chunks and lumps of steel, which seems weird because we pulled roofs off, and I think roofs are just sheet metal. So I'm not really sure why we got chunks and lumps of steel, um, but we got a lot of scrap metal as well. So whenever you're looking for materials, what I usually do is pull frames off of vehicles. Zombie child dies. Tough zombie spotted, ignore. Please don't attack me. That'll piss me off something fierce. So we pulled some more stuff off. Um, usually what I do when I'm trying to harvest metal is I will find a vehicle I don't care about. Like here on the corner is a, a door and a frame. Let's move over here and do this. Here's a door and a frame. Let's take off the door and the frame. Oh, doors require bolt turning now. I didn't know that. Can't remove the frame if there's other stuff attached to it. Okay, this is not going well. Let's find something I can actually take the frame off of. Okay, remove the quarter panel. Remove the frame. Okay, so we would get a steel frame and some sheet metal and what I would do is butcher the steel frame and it takes a long time but you'll see it gives 20 lumps of steel lumps of steel are the biggest piece please don't attack me I'm just so not in the mood today uh, oh we failed to get anything of course we did because it was a damaged frame really hate that uh, again I know I'm complaining a lot but in cataclysm if you butcher something that is partially damaged it sometimes literally gives you nothing and it's like I pull the frame off of it there's obviously something that you can get out of it because it still exists. At the very minimum, it should give you scrap metal. It shouldn't just disappear from existence. But here we'll butcher this one. It takes a long time, but it gives a lot of lumps of steel. Lumps of steel are the biggest chunks that you will get. And then we can break down each lump of steel into chunks of steel if we want to. How many lumps of steel? Do three of them. Uh, that's a quality of life thing where you can just select how many you want. Again, this takes a ton of time, but if you're just harvesting metal for crafting, you, you usually have time at that point. So here we've gotten a bunch of chunks of steel and, and we'll take the lumps as well. So we've essentially secured a ton of metal. And if we were just trying to make, why are you guys even down here? Of all the places you could be. So we're gonna fight this tough zombie. We're gonna try to be smart about it. But without the reach weapon, we are exposed. He got me pretty good. Got me pretty good. Kill the child zombie should be easy. Um, and that's what, you know, that's why we're using reach weapons is so that we can stay out of situations like that. But whatever. I guess they're hearing the robots and they're migrating, but whatever. Um, and we'll just drop the metal here. Anyway, we have enough materials now to make our spears. No, not spears. Spikes. Spikes. So give me three spikes. Dispose. Store in inventory. Uh, our foot is aching because we're so hot. Let's, um, we're going to try to find replacements for, he broke our long sleeve shirt too. It kind of irritates me because I was going to talk about repairing items uh, and tailoring in, in the next episode or two. Take off the boots. You'll see they have uh, 80 warmth and we're so hot by being near the fire that we're getting these messages which are causing us pain and things, which is annoying. Uh, we have the spikes. Let's make the spear. Uh, make the forked spear again. You can see how tedious it is to constantly be making new spears. 
Can we craft shoes? What what do I have for footwear? I really don't want to be wearing the wooden the uh, winter boots anymore. Feet. You can make clogs, which is the dumbest thing I can think you could ever wear in the apocalypse. Is some wood clogs. We can make scrap boots, some leather stuff, but we don't have leather really. I mean, we do. We've been harvesting leather things. We could make some leather sandals. I don't like the idea. I don't like open-toed shoes in real life. I think. Uh, if you're out in public, no one wants to see your godforsaken toes. Uh, I knew like an 80-year-old man who would wear Crocs and no socks all day, every day, and then having to look at his nasty yellow toenails and stuff. Oh, God, just put shoes on, you heathens. Just wear shoes. Shod your feet. Uh, so we can't really do anything. The, the benefit is that shoes are everywhere. Um, in fact, the houses we've already looted, we could probably go back right now and find a pair of shoes to wear. Um, but we'll go... I think barefoot is actually a penalty of some sort. I really don't want to be barefoot out in the world in the apocalypse. God forbid you get tetanus or something. Whatever, this episode has been not great, but we've shown you basically how to get the forge and whatnot up and running. And we've talked about harvesting metal. So like if we went back and like we forged, we, we built the forge, well, we're going to need the, those tongs. You'll see it only takes a couple of lumps uh, one lump of steel to make some tongs because they're very big pieces of metal. Uh, what's the other thing you need? Um, we would need a proper hammer, but we can do that no problem. We would need um, an anvil, which uses a lot of lumps. 40, lu 40 lumps of steel. Good God in heaven, you know I love you. Uh, so it would require quite a lot of lumps of steel. Uh, and then tongs, anvil... There's something else. We still don't have the swage and die set is like the main other thing. But uh, we went over the gist of it. Man, this episode didn't come out the way I thought it would either. Um, not feeling super confident today. Uh, having a lot of personal problems, which uh, I offhandedly mentioned, but is actually like a really big deal. So just trying to press on and not think about it. Uh, and it certainly doesn't help when the episodes go real bad. Because then you just think about how inadequate you are and how, how bad you are at life. But anyway, I think we'll just wrap this one because uh, I don't know what else to say. And I'm kind of spinning a little bit mentally. So let's just uh, drop some stuff. We'll drop the fork spear we don't need anymore. We really only need the home wrecker when we're going out and destroying things. Why don't we, in the next episode, talk about tailoring and getting ourselves repairing these items maybe. I don't know. We already did an episode on repairing. I don't know. Whatever. I need a moment. So thank you for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed. I'll be back with more in the near future. See you next time.